does not exist because of that tree. I don't, I don't believe. In my own standing there, I was able to get out of the driveway myself today very easily. Could we hear from um, Mr. Mahaffey about what he feels would be the solution for them? I have two pretty you know, first shift. How about I am disagreeing with Richard about getting out of the driveway. Especially in the morning and late in the afternoon when the traffic is heavier. People are coming home from work, people are going to work first thing in the morning. That traffic there is heavy. And it's hard to see because people drive so fast there. That pine tree does block the view coming of cars coming around the curve. I couldn't see who was coming. I get really nervous when I get out there and I really don't know who's coming. I also put a request in to have a mirror. I think actually the mirrors would be the best solution. For both left and right. Um, and also for all the seasons, in the fall, winter, spring, summer, I think the mirrors would really be the best solution. I have people renting my house right now, and so next to me, and Alex is right behind her. They almost had a car accident getting out of that driveway. And I then I at first requested the tree to be removed and also to put mirrors up. But Mayor Ann informed me that the city refused to cut the tree down. But, and they're concerned, the city's concerned about mirrors. So the reason I'm here is to make sure something happens. And also the previous owner of this house, and Frank, she also requested for that tree to be cut down. The city denied that request. They said it was a healthy tree, so they denied the request. Okay. I have a question for you, oh, please. I have a question for you, Richard. What time did you leave the driveway today when you were visiting? Uh, 9, 9, 9, 9.30, about 9.30. I'll be about a bit at that time. At that time, people would have already left for work, or many people would have already left for work. You said you feel that the mirrors are at least part or a good part of the solution? Uh, I think the mirrors actually would be the best uh, way to oh, resolve that uh, issue for uh, both left and uh, right uh, the traffic, uh, especially in the winter time. Uh, because then uh, the snow gets piled uh, up because see. of the plowing and I can't see uh, over the snow banks. Uh, 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 but, uh, out. And I've asked neighbors to come and watch and help me get out of that driveway. I have a, so I have a question. Really. I also Can have a question. Can my renter speak for themselves? Yes, my renter yes. speak for themselves today. Could you give your name, please, and your address? So I'm Ann Jascott, and I'm renting um, 405 Florence Road from uh, Dick Mahaffey. And we've had a couple of incidents there that I can recall. Um, on one occasion, I've had to suddenly reverse very quickly when I thought it was clear to leave the driveway, and then I turned out I was wrong, and so a car, has, as Richard said, you know, drove up very quickly and had to back up all of a sudden. Um, another time, if we have any visitors uh, or guests, it's sometimes hard for people to maneuver in the driveway, and sometimes people have to actually back out, which is even, even worse. And so I've also had to um, sort of help stop traffic while my mom was, was backing out since she didn't have any other uh, really room to maneuver in the driveway. So yeah, it always makes us nervous too when we're um, leaving and we we do our best to look, but it's very hard to, to see in either direction. Honestly, I think if you're... Done. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I'm Alex Bryan, uh, yes. also living in that residence. Um, and uh, I guess I would, you know, last winter was our first winter renting there. Um, and we all know last winter was pretty warm. We actually didn't have that many conditions, but we're, or, but we're pretty nervous about this coming winter or future winters where um, if there are, is ice 
at Forms. Uh, you know, it's kind of an upward slope getting out of the driveway. So, um, uh, so there's the risk of slipping and then you know getting into the road as people are coming. And then, especially in winter, it's harder for people to slow down when they're driving that fast. So. Um, um. Do you think that mirrors would solve the problem? I think mirrors would be a great first step, especially I agree that they're healthy trees and they're beautiful and we would love to and keep if, them there. And if the mirrors were there, yeah. the tree wouldn't move Right, and, down. Yep, and I agree that also with um, what his assessment yeah. that the limbs are high enough where cutting any limbs wouldn't make any difference. It's, it's really the trunks um, mm -hmm. and the hemlocks too. You know, so there's kind of a narrow window in between the two big trees that are there that you can see. Um, but yeah, so the mirrors would help see further um, any motion, you know, that would be even around the hemlock, I think, so. You also mentioned hemlock bushes. Yes, sir. And that those impede there might be some improvement yes. to the line of sight with hemlock bushes, which would open up the view between the trees, and mirrors would give an additional view. Um, so this sounds at least like a, the direction for a solution. Were mirrors proposed previously, and there yes. has been some delay in acting on that? And what would the cause of that delay have been? The mirrors were suggested which I was told by Dick Mahaffey, both Pat Shaughnessy and I, a year ago. I also had talked with Council Ryan O'Donnell, who is on transportation and parking, who's the chair, and he said that at that point, mirrors were brought up, but they wanted to look at the town of Amherst and if they had an ordinance, well, what the legality part was of it. So, Richard, do you know of anything about the mirrors? The only thing I know about the mirrors is that there was a uh, quite a large discussion about them back in 2013. Yeah. Um, and Joe Cook actually, uh, and uh, Owen Freeman Daniels at the time, I think, was the board council that was actually the chairperson of transportation department at the time. I might be mistaken, but I believe that's the case. Um, and talked about actually uh, what the city's liability would be for if a resident wanted to purchase and install a mirror in the public right away that aided them. Wasn't that a resident in Ward 3 in I, 2013? Um, it's, it doesn't if I recall, the, only, the only meal that I have, it doesn't specify um, where. Because ours was just a year ago. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the one in Ward 3. Right. So it sounds like a ball was dropped here. Yes. Absolutely. So Definitely. we need to move it because I don't think the issue is the resident purchasing the mirror. The issue is the city installing, then maintaining, and having a standard to be sure that the mirror is kept clear and visible. Well, I think part of the problem is that there is no policy. There is no policy for mirrors in the city, and there's very little policy that I can find working with Maggie Chan to try to find some other uh, other cities and towns that have policies on mirrors and it's very uh, it's not very clear so the issue is is that from a policy standpoint there has to be a policy that has to be approved by the department and eventually approved by the mayor to actually allow these types of mirrors to go up uh, in the public right away because it is public property so the question is, is that if a resident were to come in and ask to have a mirror installed, there has to be, has to be some kind of set criteria that would uh, be followed in order to say, yes, this mirror is needed, another no, mirror is not needed. Um, you know, we, because someone, say for example, has a hard time turning their neck. You know, they say, well, I can't see out of my driveway anymore, so I can't turn my neck, so I want a mirror. So I mean, that, that's just an extreme example, but I'm just trying to give you parameters. Uh, where his, his uh, obviously need is important, but there's no policy. I don't have a I don't have an issue with the mirror at all. I think the mirror would be a great solution. My only issue is how do we move forward from this point to get the mirror installed? Who's responsible for the mirror? Um, who pays for the mirror? Who maintains the mirror? 
because it is in the public right away, and I think it would have to be probably something that Joe Cook would have to look at again. He's the chief procurement officer for the city, but we still have to develop a policy that I think we'll have to go in front of. My question is, Every you day. are the department head of highway. I am the okay. division head. Okay, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, what I'm asking as a city councilor representing my resident and also the Commission on Disabilities, mm. of asking Richard if you could work on an ordinance or a policy with Joe Cook. I would not see that there should not be a problem doing that. Joe Cook, I've worked with him very, very well, and you have to. Something needs to be done here. I'm looking at people's lives, and it's going to come to the point, if there is a very bad accident, I am going to be so vocal because I have asked for help with somebody in need and I think the city should come forth to support him or whoever has a circumstance that involves somebody's life and their safety. I, I would also suggest because you're making a specific request of what may be a general need but this, it is increased because of your lack of hearing, that you are requesting a reasonable modification to policies and procedures under Title II of the ADA, specifically to expedite installation of the mirror in this instance, while the city goes through the process of evaluating and generating a more general policy and standard. But you should not, I believe, have to wait unduly, which apparently you already have. Thank you. So I think I would like to propose that as a as a motion of the, the commission. I second it. He agrees. Dick just said he agrees with what you I'd like to do a roll call on um, um, his I motion. I motion get words for it though. How do you want to uh, That it is the um, recommendation of the Commission on Disability um, that the uh, city move um, with all due haste to install the mirror as a request under Title II of the ADA for a reasonable modification to policies and procedures and that the mirror be installed um, while a more general policy is considered and developed. I second it. I make that motion to approve it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Aye. a roll call? Yes. I approve. Okay, I'm gonna go through the list. Okay. Judith Kimberly? Aye. Could you please read the, um, the motion? Commission make a recommendation that the city move with all due haste to install the mirror as a request under Title II of the ADA and that the mirror be installed while a more general policy is considered. I would add to that it is requested as a reasonable modification to policies and procedures. I think that's understood. I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't it's the specific yeah. legal provision oh, under which there is a right to do something that may fall outside of or in addition to a general policy. That's fine. Can we take the little call? Yes, and I don't think, I think right now. It's just the language. Right, we're starting as a, with a new chair, new vice chair. Nobody should be talking policy. without raising your hand and letting the chair call your name out to speak. That's for everybody. Got it. Okay, I got it. You Roger, got it now? Roger. Want me to reread it? Yes. Okay, the commission make a recommendation that the city move with all due haste to install the mirror as a request under Title II of the ADA as a reasonable modification to policies and procedures and that the mirror be installed while a more general policy is considered. 
make a motion to accept that. Second it. Tisha seconded it. Okay. Dick has a question. Gay's um, over there. It's gay. You gotta come over here. On both sides. Can you push in there? You got a left and a right mirror. Yeah. What we were talking about was for cars coming left and right. Okay, come. Okay. I, I, I move that we amend the resolution to specify that a dual mirror be installed facing both to the left and the right. I will accept that motion, but I also feel that with an amendment that I would like to have Richard Pasolati and the department head from the Department of Public Works, Donna Lascaia, and our procurement officer, um, Joe Cook, to work with us very closely on any movement that is occurring. I agree. Richard, can you make that happen? Yeah. Can we, can we move the vote? Okay, I got married. I got Judith from Council of Barge. Is this the vote on the motion? On the motion that we just did. Yes. Okay. Um, I accept. Uh, Linda, Linda's not a voting member. No. Uh, Gay Jane Fortin? Gay? Yeah. Leticia Ward? I vote yes. Chris Polanis? Yes. Jay, James Winston is excused. Uh, Jean? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So we have unanimously agreed to with this request to the city. And I want to thank our department head on highway, on our highway and streets, Richard Pasoletti, for being here and hearing the concerns of a resident who really has a serious safety issue in the people that are living. Not just him, but people living on that street. Thank you. Just Thank you. Just one quick recommendation yes. that you actually take that motion and you actually incorporate it into a letter that comes from the Disabilities Commission that can be sent to me so I can have that uh, yeah. as a uh, reflection of this commission support. This we definitely will get it out. Yeah. Send it. Can you, what's your address? 125. You can just email it to me. You have an email address. Linda. Linda. And Ruth has my email address. You can just attach it to Linda it. Linda will email it. Okay, perfect. I'll get you the Thank you. You're welcome. We will do that. Okay. Well, do you just possible? Do you want it so that it states you, but also Joe Cook? No, I, I think what it should is should, it just should state exactly what Okay. The motion says in, in reference to you. In reference to the actual installation of the mirror okay. 405, across from 405 Lawrence Road. Okay. The, this commission is in support of that and specifies the motion because that the ADA law is interesting to me. I can actually look it up myself to understand it. So that would be good. Thank and you. Then we can go from there. And thank you for You're welcome. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you all for coming. Um, yeah, um, while well, you're here, if yes. I know this is out of order from the agenda, but um, I was just wondering about the bench um, that we oh, were yeah. supposed to have for the senior center. You have, to refresh, you have to refresh my memory. Because, uh, I know. It seemed it was a long, long time ago in another era of Patty. <laughs> and so um, I'm, I'm, I sort of need to refresh my um, awareness of it too, but um, it, it is on our agenda. And um, we, it, it is, um, I had just one note basically saying that a bench has been ordered. Um, I called the manufacturer and the person did not respond to me again. But I also, on that note, it said to, to contact you. Um, I guess the disability, um, this commission. Can we talk about it? Do you, want to, do you mind? Hmm? Do you mind if we talk about that bench because you were not involved yeah. with it? Yeah, please. Richard, this was ordered last year um, through the Commission on Disabilities. I think Patty had ordered it. Ruth, you had the paperwork. Was it what? When did we approve it? Last September, October? Something like that. We approved it on the Commission to donate 
a bench, just like we have up in, in Florence, okay. but it was going to be similar to what's out there. Okay. Okay. Well, where is the bench? Pardon? Where is the bench? I believe it's still at the manufacturer's. It's been ordered and paid for, though. Yes. And they never shipped it? I have the paperwork. I'll mail you a copy of it. Patty okay. said it was all taken care of. And I'm sorry that I'm not more helpful and kind of drawing a blank. Can I be just in touch with yes. you then? Sure. And um, I'll give you the information that I have on it, if okay. that's okay. All right. And where, do, you, do you happen to know where the location is? Is it going to be here? I yes. We have, we have donated it so that the ones that are, you come out the door on the right-hand side, yeah. it'd be placed there from the Commission on Disability. Well, that's not a problem. If we can get it, we'll put it together and install it. Because it was paid for. Yeah. Um, when I called the manufacturer, they, they had a blank also, so let me, we'll, we'll just, if we can keep that communication sure. open, I think everybody will remember it, but it was so long ago, and I'm sorry to have to ask you that at no, this it's, point. it's fine, you're challenging me, which is good. <laughs> um, I, I have a question, you know the, you know the, the, the arm rolls for the benches, is that, is that what he does, do you remember? We talked about it at the mental disability about separation. That's it's a separate. You're off track right now, honey. We'll get back later. We need to. No, I know he does that kind of stuff. That's why. No, this that one he doesn't do. Oh, that's my. That's the mayor's office. Okay. Well, why don't we stick okay, to the agenda? Okay, can we move along on the agenda? Sorry about that. Um, next, uh, lives worth living in the social studies curriculum. Um, Chris, if you would like to talk about that. Um, yeah. We are planning to do a broadcast of Lives Worth Living, um, a film that lays out the political history of the disability movement as civil rights law. Uh, that will be uh, next month. And what we are interested in doing is really kind of a dual action of both um, exposing more um, town officials and people in the town to the film, but the larger purpose is to have this introduced into curriculum in the public schools. Um, there's an abbreviated version which has been developed with a complete curriculum package for social study teachers. The State Department of Education as a licensure agreement now so school systems will not have to uh, pay any excessive fees on it um, but essentially while well, Boston has taken an action to provide the basis for it it now needs to be adopted by local communities our step in that direction will be next month with a showing of the film but uh, then also communication with the with the school system um, about really building it into the curriculum and it's important it's to be in social studies curriculum not special education curriculum it's about disability rights law and in that regard I do have to say at the end of the film we'll say you know more about where the ADA came from you will not know what is in the ADA in detail one of the things that's in the ADA is what has been done here today which is to provide a sign language interpreter. These are provisions that are covered under the ADA and specifically the plan of action that we discussed within the commission in the course of the next year to review and update self-evaluation and transition plan requirements, part of which will include setting a general policy around sign language interpreters, assistive hearing systems, and other communications mechanisms. That's one part of the law. Uh, Mary Ann, would you like to talk about? Um, yes. You, um, you saw a woman bring me in a packet. That's our council clerk. And her and I worked last week on the language of a open public hearing. Mm -hmm. We have made a decision that the open public hearing by the commission would be on December 13th on a Tuesday, 4 o'clock p.m. The North Dakota Senior Services Great Room. The agenda, which Chris just talked about, which is a film, Life's Worth Living, 
subtitled The Great Fight for Disability Rights. And if you look at this agenda, I think it's very, going to be very educational. And if you look at the top of this agenda, you will see it says Northampton Disability Commission, Northampton City Council, Northampton School Committee, and the Northampton Human Rights Commission. That's because they are a body of the city. Every director, and I've just given one to Richard Pasoletti, so that hopefully he will be here. All school members will be invited. All city councilors will be invited. All principals are going to be invited. And as many department heads and agencies that we will be doing a mailing and inviting. So anyways, once we did the language on it, I went over to Chris and Judith and, and had Chris take a look at it. And um, we had to make sure we put the in it and it's there. And it's a good thing I went over there because um, Pam said it's a good thing you went over. So anyways, we then had to have the city solicitor look at the language to approve this. And he did approve it, so I need approval now of the commission because my council clerk, as of tomorrow, will be placing it up on the website so everybody will be seeing this. Can I have a motion, please? Second. I, excuse me, Jean. I move that we uh, accept the, uh, uh, the flyer for distribution and thank the city councilor for her, uh, the energy with which she has pursued this. I second it. So moved. Um, so this will be, we are moving, the, this will be what we do at our next commission meeting. Do a roll call on this. Do, can we do a roll call or all yes, the things? Yes, I have a roll call on this. Uh, we have about 20 minutes. I think we just want to vote on the email. I think we can just do the I, I'm very uncomfortable I, I with that. Think it's, until we understand all of it, let's exactly, do it. Exactly, because right? this is uh, important. This is an open public hearing. Okay, City Council of Large? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Kane Fortin? Yes. Leticia Ward? Yes. Chris Columbus? Yes. James Winston Spears? Gene Page? Yes. And Anna Pearl? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Unanimously approved. Okay, move along. So um, next on the agenda, uh, the agenda is um, refugees invited to Northampton, uh, an issue that you wanted to talk to them about. Yeah, this is, I'm going to be very quick. I went to a meeting with Councilor Labarge about the refugees that Northampton has invited into the city. Um, it's being run by the Christian, what was the name? Christian Chairs? Catholic Chairs. Um, I spoke to the woman who ran it after the meeting because we have no idea who's coming to Northampton. We don't know if it's going to be a family of seven, a family of five, if they're going to be um, deaf, if they're going to be handicapped, if they're all going to be healthy. Speaking to her, the towns around us that have gotten refugees have gotten some disabled people. Um, when the disabled come, she tells me they don't have wheelchairs, they don't have um, crutches, they get carried if they come in disabled. We have no way of knowing if they're going to become disabled or not. Um, I brought it up to her that we have um, resources that could be used. Um, if she'd be willing to come and speak to us about it, both the Chris, Chris, Christian charities, did I get it wrong again? Catholic Catholic I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, hometown Security and um, Stavros, who was also at the meeting, who knows about it, is interested. Um, and the lady from the Catholic Charities thought that the two towns that did get disabled people would also be interested in talking to us and giving us their uh, experiences and what we might be looking at. It's just a might. There's no definite that we're going to get disabled. There's no definite that we're not. But I thought it was something that we should be prepared for. And since we can help, if it does happen, it's something that we should possibly think about. The other option is something that Councilor Barge suggested to me. There is already a commission that exists in Northampton for this refugee thing. And maybe we should just have a, 
uh, liaison with that commission? That's a possibility. Discussion? Yes. Um, I've attended three of the hearings, and the city has open hearings on them. Mm -hmm. I would highly suggest at any point, if you get on the website or the city, mm -hmm. Pat Keller is working tirelessly along with the mayor and counselors and with the Catholic charity. Right now, which we don't know who's coming. Once the federal government clears it, that's when they're gonna know who's coming. Oh, so it has been brought up also by another counselor at a meeting that we had a week ago of how she felt or would she support the refugees here at senior services. And one day you did say yes. Correct. Well, we do have, I think, wheelchairs downstairs, whatever. Also, it has been talked with Cooley Dixon Hospital. There are already over 600 and something volunteers already that are willing to help whoever comes in as families. So I think by going and keeping up with what is occurring at these hearings that they're having, we're gonna hear more and more and how much more help we can get in this city. With the medical parts of it, somebody being disabled, I think it's all gonna to come together. And the next hearing, as you said, is uh, November 13th? Or? No, I don't know when they're having your next one. You have to look on the website. And their website is, what is the website? North Denton City website. Oh, it's just the, oh, okay, it's not the Catholic Charity. No. Okay. I, I think this uh, commission should acknowledge uh, the importance of the inclusion of people with disabilities in the response to the refugee crisis should acknowledge that people with disabilities are among um, the highest number who die, mm -hmm. experience exacerbation, experience neglect, and experience abuse in the course of any refugee crisis. I would also point out that while the statement by the city council is magnificent, it would be nice to introduce some language in here that also acknowledges uh, ableism or disability uh, among the protected classes. This is the point of the dang film. These are civil rights issues. Exactly. Those involved in social justice perennially forget that disability is fundamentally a matter of civil rights as well as all of the dimensions of uh, human services and other supports that have to be applied. And I certainly hope that this commission will be actively involved in responding to the specific needs of any immigrants and family members who come to the city. Should we make a motion on whether we want to take an active stance on being involved in any disability, any, any uh, any uh, refugees with disabilities coming into the city? Well, as a council, we are involved. I mean, as a commission, mm -hmm. as the commission. I think when the time comes and we're educated about who's coming. I would make the limited motion that we um, request that the city add language to its resolution, that, that the resolution specifically reflect that people with disabilities are very much a part of this that. refugee crisis and the general crisis of uh, incivility and hostility to civil rights. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a limited yeah. motion. I think Do we that's need that's a, a second on that? I <laughs> second. <laughs> All right, Our, um, do, do we, we don't have a lot of time. We have two more uh, agenda items. One, uh, a report on the training uh, that people went to, uh, the um, access monitor training. Yes, yes I will talk. There's not too much I really have to say. I thought it was very educational. I think the instructor was very thorough. He was amazing. If, if you needed to ask questions, 
He was right there to answer them. He guided you. So I'm waiting for the next session to come up because that's going to be advanced. And I think they were stating something to the effect of maybe, what, five to seven people they were going to be selecting. So, but it was well worth going. Um, I have nothing more to say. Yes, it was. I mean, I, I found day two especially informative because we, um, the, the, um, we had a live, live um, video feed to view of, um, of bathrooms and public locations that, that needed improvements in their adaptations of, for, even for bathrooms, for museums for office buildings and that was just that was really eye-opening to see how much restroom facilities are still being built incorrectly and people need to be people need to be um, you know informed to become community access monitors in each and every city in this nation and that is how change will occur really quick as well. yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, Latasha, you want to speak? Oh, Latisha, you want? Oh, yes. Also, I was amazing because I got to, I got to hear what he has to say, and I like, I like Dovin, I think, and I would like to do more advanced for me because I think it will help me more to learn more. So, and I think I will disperse to more other kind of workshop stuff. So, yeah. Thank you. Peace out. Okay, during the training, we were given a thumb drive that contains all the documentation, including stuff that we didn't actually get printed. We just got it on the thumb drive. There is almost two gigabytes of data here. I transferred it to my computer. If anybody would like a copy of all the documentation, I can email it to you. Just get with me off after the meeting. This is going to be at the senior center. So anybody who wants to look at it electronically, we'll have to figure out how to make it available, but it'll be at the senior center. There is a new symbol that Massachusetts is using for disabled instead of just the old wheelchair, and this is it. They gave us all a bag with a little symbol on it. Just I have one. Yeah, you got one too. Mm -hmm. You got one too. Yeah. Um, and I have all the handouts that they gave us. Um, there are several copies in the library if anybody's interested in them. I would like to make the motion. Uh, we were told about the advanced training. Advanced training is going to be held all over Massachusetts and they're looking for sites for small groups. And I would like to make a motion that we pre present ourselves as an available location for the advanced training to be held. I, so and I, Ruth and I talked about that and it definitely makes sense. So moved. Yes, I, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, I'll get in so touch with um, the gentleman who held the training and let him know that we were available. Um, while we were at the training, just, I don't know who knows this, but every year, I've been doing this for nine years now, every year when we have new officers, we update the state with all the names and everything, and that's been done. Okay. Yes. I would like to make a recommendation, the review of COD bylaws. That is, takes time. But I am asking that this goes on the agenda for 217 in January or February, whatever. And I think the concentration of that meeting should be strict with this. I do want to make one comment about the um, bylaws, if I could. I don't know what this was, but there's an internet address on the top of the bylaws. That address is no good. So when we do make the revisions, we'll have to Cool. That. But the, the motion is to table the review of the bylaws yes. until 217. So moved. Second. 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 This will be tabled. We will review uh, them. We have them to review and we will take it up in 217. Right. Okay. And then our last is all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? This, okay, so the last is the discussion of holiday party at our December meeting. Okay, be at the we same don't, time our, that we our December meeting is going to be the film, and if you look at the agenda and the flyer, it says refreshments will be served. I would 
definitely ask that we look at possibly cheese, grapes, um, vegetable platters, and stuff like that. Um, I like that idea. And possibly, I don't know, Linda, do you have a Costco card here from the Yes, we do. Good. I would say maybe like two or three of us go and get the food there. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking also that maybe it's something a little more substantial as well. I don't know how, each, how everyone's stomach is, but I'm just thinking that the weather will be a little bit colder in a couple of weeks and maybe something something slightly more substantial as well. Um, I don't think I don't think soup will be an option. Um, but maybe something maybe some kind of small um, sandwiches even if, uh, something of that nature. Um, uh, maybe some wrap like not wrap sandwiches or tuna fish. Uh, well, we're not positive yet because we do not know how many people are going to walk through that door. Exactly. Okay. I think there there are so many different types of vegetable dishes out there, as enough and cheese and crackers and grapes and strawberries and things like that. And beverages. We need to make sure we have. Well, we understand that. So we'll probably have salsa water and whatever. But anyways, we'll talk about it. And I think Ruth. You could offer salad. Okay. Salad. okay. Yeah. Ruth and Judy. Judy and I will be involved in it in London. Okay. Making that decision. Okay. Also, to another question, yeah. since we are not having a meeting, but was there something to... I just wanted to mention uh, one thing specifically uh, for our, our guests. The, uh, the film is captioned. It speaks to the uh, oh. revolt in Caledon. Oh, right. I'm, I'm King Jordan. It <laughs> 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 is beautiful. <laughs> so we, we want to get the word out to the <laughs> deaf community in, in Northampton. Sweet. Can I tell my friend? Absolutely. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Also, too, I think which is really, really important here is that we get this settled tonight. Before we leave, I don't care if we're five minutes late, is are we going to have meetings January or February, like we do every year, or if not, say, um, not have it in February and not have it in August. This is what we've been doing and everybody was happy with that. So Ruth, what do you think? Let Ruth talk, she wants to talk. I, I agree, when the weather gets really, really bad and snowy, um, it's hard for a lot of us to get around. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to leave the house. Mm -hmm. So I, and I agree, I think February and August are good months for us to take off. Mm -hmm. And I buy laws. We only have to have 10 meetings a year. It is not mandatory that we have 12. Mm, that's true. I second it. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. <laughs> so fast. Is there any more new business uh, for tonight? Anything that we would like to put? The one. We had requested a uh, follow-up on the uh, communication about benches at Pulaski. Oh, yes. okay. well, I'm sorry, could you repeat that, Chris? I didn't hear. Um, we had sent a, a letter to the mayor expressing concern that none of the benches at Pulaski Park have armrests. Yes. And looking for a design solution that would, whether it be to install a different kind of bench or a design solution that would design an adjacent planter with arm rail that would function as an armrest. But even though it is not a matter of code to have armrests, it is clearly established that benches with armrests are far more functional for people with disabilities, people with limited stamina, um, for a whole wide range of citizens. 
And you had some communication? I did. I did have communication with the mayor. And I actually invited him, as, as instructed by um, this commission, to come to the meeting, invited him to come. He, it was not possible for him to come today, and he was going to follow up your our letter. It was actually a real, really wonderful letter written by um, by a uh, person. But um, I, he is, um, he couldn't come today, but he has he's supposedly written a letter. But in response to that, he is um, addressing, he's going to try to address our concerns. And he's going to, he's, he plans on taking, talking to the architect regarding that. And um, they will be adding, it, he anticipates adding um, um, some, uh, you know, just some way, whether it's something uh, designed like you were suggesting, uh, suggesting or um, just adding some arms to the benches. But they won't all have this, but there will be uh, some accommodation made. And, he, uh, and I will, um, you know, I will ask again to please get that um, in writing for us. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any more new business? We had a situation last month with the agenda. I asked for all items to be sent to me two weeks before the meeting, which would give me a week to put it together, get it to at the time it was going to be now. From now on, the agenda, when I put it together, is going to Judith and Councilor LaBarge. When they approve it, and I'll send it to Linda, yeah. we will have final approval and then get it up onto the website and everything. Um, apparently, two weeks is too soon. If I ask for it a week before, that gives me maybe two days to get it put together and sent to you guys. So I want to know when you want me to cut off the agenda so we can make sure we get it on top. Let's say we have. Well, that's all right, say we go into, she doesn't have to worry about December, that's taken right, care that's of. Done. So let's say in January, we have January 17th, that's our next meeting. Oh. So we're having a meeting in January, right? Yeah. February? No. 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 So that's a different yeah. So I would say, Here's our meeting. I would say the sixth. Yeah, maybe the, the Friday, the, which gives <coughs> the weekend and the whole week. Right. Yeah, it'll have to be the, up on the website by the 13th. To give it 48 yep. hours. 48 hours. So if I get everything on the 6th and do it over the weekend, I can get it to you guys on the 9th. Yep. Mm -hmm. That would be perfect. So, Okay, um, and again, so agenda items, December's agenda is done. That's the flyer that Council of Barge handed out tonight. Uh, for January, our meeting is the 17th. If I get all items by the 6th, then I can put the agenda together and get it to um, Judith and Marianne by the 9th. And I would please jump overload the agenda right okay. Yeah. okay there i have another question I, it hasn't happened but for example like this month if a lot of people come to me with items i don't who's going to be the one to select which ones are the most important which ones get left off and which the ones chair and the vice chair yeah. so, so, so you thing. should put everything I'll on put everything and that we will be right in that one so I, I won't try and, I'm just right. going to put everything in. Yes. Yes. How about for the month of January, which you make your life very really easy, mm -hmm. as we go through and do the, the bylaws. There's January's agenda. How's but that? If anybody has anything and you want to get it to me, I'll get it ready for the March agenda. agenda. So exactly. you know, if you think of something, don't hesitate to send it to okay. me. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think, Chris, when do you go into the end of December? Yeah, I should be good by, hopefully by mid-January. That's why I'm Hopefully. Chris, I would like to have a visit you at the hospital. I would like to come with you. 
I prefer Franklin County. Better care. We have we we're asking something here for new business and I think it's important. Could have been Greenfield, right? He's going to yes. He's going to the 29th. There you go, Judith. Look at this. We we're considering moving the our January meeting a week later. Oh. So that um, Chris Palmer says he's not uh, right. has I, a chance I think, to recover from the surgery and right. be present at the meeting. And I think to accommodate him is very, very important and let him heal and come back fresh. So we are looking at moving it from the 17th to the 24th at 4 o'clock p.m. Okay, I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The meeting will be moved to the 24th. So the agenda and everything will be moved up the week? Yes. Okay. Which gives you two months. <laughs> yeah. Is there any more new business? No. Well, then shall the meeting is adjourned. Move to adjourn. I second it. Aye. Aye.